always has to be something Marvel? a little bit broken. Marvel's balanced? Marvel is not balanced. That was one of the greatest games ever. But anyway, Shark's playing Lucina this time. His Lucina is very, very damn good. And uh, I know exactly why he's playing Lucina because when you have a decent disjoint against Snake, sometimes you can just let him uh, pull the grenades while he's getting juggled and, and you'll just keep hitting him without trading the grenades. Also, uh, edge guarding Snake with Lucina is not very difficult at all. I mean, I don't want to bring up Marth either, but, you know, not having to rely on getting a tipper to kill Snake 2 is just even better for Lucina as well. Yeah. We also see something, too, that's very reminiscent of his Joker play. He has really good movement as well. Like, I don't see him uh, getting blown up by the grades in neutral that much. He's just kind of dancing around those explosions, getting hits when he can. And he has a lot of, like, talk about movement, too. He has a lot of patience to even stall out the last opportunity where you can get something like a downer. Because you got an excellent read. I got it's Apollo Kage like, trying to come back center stage. There is a sticky sharp on 47% oh. here. Apollo Kage wants to get more percent to wow. blow that up, but it's back on his side here. With sharp 82%. I, yep, there it is. I actually love how Apollo Kage took control the moment he stuck uh, sharp with the C4. You already yeah. saw, as soon as he was stuck with the C4, sharp completely changed how he was playing. And, uh, Apollo Kage capitalized off that super hard. That was a, that was an amazing snake play for him. Yeah. That's why and he's winning right now. Yeah, that control definitely managed to put Apollo Kage in the lead here. Good stuff on a sharp to kind of not necessarily let him recover for free. Because he's doing an excellent job hunting. Gets the forward so with Apollo Kage at 162. This man sharp is fishing and he finally lands it big here. Two stocks even, but not percent. Yeah, I don't... I mean, of course, you don't want to drop a stock, but if I'm Apollo Kage... Taking 60 plus after it was beat down so much and getting the stock beat back, that's huge for him. So I've got to put in a lot of work now since he's behind. He, he I, I don't want to say he needs to go aggressive because you don't want to just start running into Snake mindlessly, but he, he's got to make some plays happen, take some more risks, and yeah, <laughs> I mean, you take a big risk and it costs you big time against Snake. Paul Kyle taking yet another stock. Oh. Okay. Nice. Nine Gets the tech tech chase. Okay. Great dash attack. He actually just got pretty much center stage for free. <laughs> He's like, yeah, let me just dash attack to the middle of the stage. I don't care about that. Grenade into the neutral air. Forty eight percent already. I really love Apollo Kai's backer placement as well. He's really doing a good job of calling out these jumps from sharp. Oh, going high. Got the up smash in play too. A nice jab into the grenade. Ooh. Ooh. That dash, dash dance down smash, catching sharp at the ledge, nagging the jump too. That was, that was really clean from Apollo Kage. And that was a good setup too, specifically from Apollo Kage, because he had grenades to actually cover those options. That if sharp was still in any, any one of those specific bubble that he had built for himself, he was going to get hit by the grenade. And then it was good for Apollo Kage, like you said, to go from dash dance to down smash and take the suck and put him in lead. Uh, Strides, I think you said it best, right? That C4 control was so strong that it pretty much was the big factor that allowed Apollo Kage to actually have such a strong lead and then turn that lead into the entire first game. Yeah, that was insane. He actually took the first stock from um, Sharp and then made him uh, completely swing the match in his favor. But now we're seeing the Sharp Wolf. Yeah, Another Kyle one of his excellent. really, really good characters. And this is another great character to use against Snake, too, I would say. The laser is yeah. great to deal with the grenades. Your combos are disgusting on Snake. Uh, you can kill him pretty early, too. Uh, yeah, I would love to see what um, Sharp does here with the wolf, for sure. Of course, Snake can definitely mess up wolf pretty bad, too, if you know the wolf doesn't play carefully. Especially if it comes to the offstage with the Nikita as well. Oh, almost. That was a very scary air dodge to ledge from Apollo Kage. Wolf down smash may have gotten nerfed, but it's still killing ridiculously early. Yeah, most right. definitely. But this is big for Apollo Kage. He's not afraid to swing that up tilt either. He knows that move is so damn strong. And if Sharp drifts in at the wrong spot, you try to go for it oh. again. <laughs> yeah. What a call out there with the wolf palm. Yeah. Okay, he knows Apollo Kage is fishing for this up tilt heavily. I'm actually kind of amazed that he's throwing out such obvious oh, up no. and it's still working. 
Oh startup frames, goodness. yeah, startup frames of down smash, unfortunately, is good enough for a puck. I can actually get that up tilt. Oh, there the is the wolf the flash. flash. Oh, oh big this, misses, though. this is good oh for La Paula Kage, Dude. yep. Damage. Oh my, he jumped into the forest smash, I thought he was going to explode for sure. Paula Kage does it again. He finds that first stock and he's just, man, Sharp takes so much punishment. I'm trying to bring this back. Almost 70%, but there's the up tilt catching the neutral get up. Yeah, Sharp. good opportunity for the spacing there on the forward tilt, just enough to actually be safely spaced. Yeah, sharp. Luckily for him, Wolf can uh, definitely even things up with a good combo, but man, he's going to need a lot of it right here. Forward into the double nair is pretty good for him right now. Good patience. Trying his best to just play around the grenade. Not a bad trade for him there with the dash attack. Uh oh. Okay. Nice. Go straight to the ledge. Oh, a lot of pressure. There's the up tilts from Apollo Kage again. This is like some of the most shameless up tilts I've seen from a, a snake. <laughs> and there it is. Another one. Oh. Okay, nice. he's fine. Trying to hold the stage here. Gets the back air. Not enough here. 128. Sharp still with the stage here. He's got to be careful with those C4s and those grenades. Nice, using that double jump here. Trying to find a different timing here to come in on Apollo Kage. Good respect. Wolf has great aerial drift, so you can just kind of jump around his opponent's shield. Make them not sure when he's going to throw out a move or not. But man, Apollo Kage, again, he's like so close to racking up 60 plus percent just from trades alone. And Sharp, he's still sticking to like a very patient game plan here. He doesn't want to just start uh, approaching in really bad spots with that dash attack. Not the safest. Oh no. Okay. A lot of patience here from Sharp. He knows he's got practically 60% on his name. Apollo Kage is literally a touch of death away here. He can't lose his cool here. And nice finally. Bet. Yeah, he, he reads the landing on that situation here. This could be very doable for Sharp. He just has to play as cautiously as possible. Unfortunately, a grenade after that upper will not be something that he wants here, but there is at least 23% on Snake. Nice, a fake out double jump here. Comes in back with double forward and not the third one connecting here, but he's able to get some percent. Back throw. Right, nice, four yeah. throw for positioning here. Oh, man. He was trying to see if Apollo Kaga would roll in after that. Maybe like a tech chase. I think around this person, you might still be able to get forward their uh, wolf flash on Snake. Yeah. Or, also, and even if he doesn't, look, it still gives him positioning here, especially because he has more of center stage. Yeah, this is still very scary, though. Sharp done a great job of bringing this back, but you can see the up tilts are starting to come out from Apollo Kage, too. Oh, and you can see it, too, oh. from Apollo Kage. He wanted to see if he was going to test Sharp Shield, go for a sticky or a possible oh. grab here. He's gotta be yeah. Oh, see, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to jump. He doesn't want to nab his shield. There's gonna. There might be an up tilt, and you don't want to be caught in that oh. snake. Tech chase. A raid. Yeah. Oh, oh so slow. close. Oh my god, they're both throwing out every kill move in the book. The shield is super low from Sharp. He's gonna try to retreat a little bit to regenerate it. Yeah, better trade for oh Sharp here on the back air, but you still don't want to trade. For it's all decently spaced. Yeah, oh, see, man. he's not going for any options out of shield. I like it. He just wants oh. to let go, take oh, a safer man. distance, and then see where we can come back. A little bit of patience, uh, and he gets a call back out. Air, though. Come, very, very punishable back here from Apollo Kage. Good stuff from Sharp, though. Staying patient in one of uh, the most terrifying moments you can be in against Snake. Yeah. Uh, it's it's good to have that strong patience because you can see that Sharp is really well aware of how Apollo Kage can just go for his options out of shield on the specific weight and counter that he knows. Okay, Sharp is really hungry for the stock. How hungry is it? Because if he's hungry enough, he'll go for something and I'll end up winning. And Sharp was actually that hungry that he knew it's better to just get distance, come back, fake out my jumps again. Like you said, use that great aerial drift, come in with Blaster, and then slowly pick a sh apart Apollo Kage. Yeah, it was uh, interesting too that, um, oh no, I guess this is the stress of the situation where it looked like Apollo Kage was the one that would just waiting for Sharp to do something risky and then try to punish him there. But then at the end, he just jumps into him with a super laggy back here. Oh, what? Actually, I shouldn't choice. be surprised. I mean, I've never seen Sharp play this character, but he can play wherever he wants and win most of the time. You're not and, wrong, uh, Sharp. You're not and wrong. And this is a, a good um, matchup for Samus, too. 
so. Yeah, that match was very, very close with Wolf, so I I'm not super surprised. Like, he's probably a little stressed from how hard it was. <laughs> and when you think about this matchup in general, too, the same distance that Snake wants to be, it's also really good for Samus to get her charge shots, her missiles, opportunities where she can go for Zare, even her grab. There's a lot of things Samus can do in the matchup here. We'll see how what Shark can find here. I mean, what is game two? A very strong game here because it puts you up at set point if you win this. And then you take the, you know, the whole map map um, counter picks aside. Right. Well, the thing is, um, yeah, Samus definitely has a lot of tools from far away in this matchup. But uh, this isn't necessarily a character that's easy to use as a pocket. No, not at all. Like, if you go for a very, like, you know, basic kind of flowchart strategy with this character against Snake, it can get picked apart very quickly. And, uh, Snake, a lot of times in matchups like this, he still has ways to deal with the way that the Samus is camping. He just has to change up the pattern that he throws a grenade while she's yeah. charging. And, uh, yeah, that was a bad trade for sure. Down there, trading with up tilt, you never want that. So, yeah, again, uh... Apollo Kage finds himself taking the first stock. What the heck? Oh, well, Samus is down there. <laughs> okay, I was I thought Snake like forwarded Samus, and then he texted him. Out. That was really weird to see. So, okay, there's a charge shot finally. But yeah, we're not really we're seeing him, you know, charging from a distance. But as far as actually hitting the charge shot and getting like a follow up from it, we haven't actually seen much of it from Sharp. Yeah, he tries here with the B-Reverse, unfortunately not able to find him, but he gets a back air. Stage control here once again, looking to see if he can call it Sneak from the Cypher. Nice. Okay. Either, it's, it's good. Yeah, he's able to sneak in the back air after the platform, because you can see that Apollo Kage finally was able to get out the ledge. Sharp pretty much called out, called that out. Nice spacing with the F tilt. Yeah, right now, Sharp not really playing in a distance where he can... Uh, Use the grab really, and I don't, I don't blame him. Get as much time and space to charge your uh, charge shot as much as possible. No real reason to try to force the approach against Snake at Samus a lot of times. Oh, Ooh. but that down air positioning and timing. Not only did he drift back to avoid a Polakage spike, he got his down air out in time before he could even reach the ledge. That was huge. Okay, Polakage though, he's trying to fight back. See what he can do. Nice. Nice. Great Ooh, combo down throw there. It's so much percent from Samus. That's exactly what you want in this matchup right now. And now this is great for for uh, Sharp because Paul Kage has to approach, and you know Snake's approach options versus Samus actually aren't that great when he's like forced to hold forward. Yeah, it's all about if he can actually get a call out from Sharp in that situation. And the way that Sharp Ooh. is playing, he's the one getting the calls here with the forest smash on the landing and game two, sorry, game three going to Sharp. Damn, angled up tipper forest smash. That was beautifully spaced from Sharp. Yeah, he knew where this man was jumping and he knew this man was landing. It's also really good too, specifically in this matchup, because there was a couple of times I did see Sharp go for charge shot. And it's good enough that like you get Snake to force hold shield, and he has grenade in hand, so that can cause a lot of shield damage, a potential shield break, but also you get like damage on Snake as well. So this is, like, those are three things you kind of have to take into consideration of opportunities of when you see Sharp use Samus that way. Yeah, I mean that's what makes uh, Samus so good in this matchup. Charge yes. shot is like so much reward. You get so many opportunities to charge it against Snake. Also, just have great juggling opportunities and even edge guards as well if he chooses to go that way. We, I mean, we did see a great down air spike from a Sharp, but that mainly had to do with Apollo Kage doing a bad forward air. Not necessarily him uh, having no options off stage. Okay, let's see though. Sharp, one game away from uh, being in the grand finals winner side with this Samus. Man, that screw attack out of the up air is so good, especially with the platform layout at this stage. He's going to get... Oh, no, he's, 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 he's good. Saved his jump. Oh, my God. He barely was out of range of that forward smash. Paul Kage suddenly started to uh, use a lot of forward air spikes, or at least attempts, uh, against Sharp Samus here. Okay. Great down without a shield. Yeah, I think the mid-charged... Uh, Charge shot actually combos into grab and dash attack from Samus. That's why you're kind of seeing Sharp go for that a lot. 
Oh, Ooh, you're gonna get the sweet spot though. I do like that episode one setup though. Yeah, okay. he's able to re he's able to reach Sharp's panic option there and go for the up tilt afterwards. Patient play there. Gets a landing. Uh, down throw up tilt. Yeah, not gonna kill his center stage, but now he just needs. A oh. oh, okay, that. I was gonna say he just needs a down throw to up tilt to get the kill, but gets the Nikita to work out. Okay. Oh, no sweet spot on the back here, unfortunately for Sharp. But he does get a charge shot here. Ooh. Hawkeye is taking all the damage he can get right here. Oh. Oh, oh wow. Just barely enough to kill. All right. Sharp, once again, he kind of knows what Apollo Kug is looking for. He's able to kind of slowly burst in here before it's all not enough. No forward out of the shield. I do like the fact that he tried to go with dash tech after charge shot, but there's not much to be found there. Back air, missed opportunity. Oh. Man, he's trying to get these charge shots to work, but they're just trading with the grenades a lot. Oh. Okay. Another Nikita here. Using the down beat to just drift around that. Oh, no up tilt from uh, Apollo Kage on the roll, surprising. Again, using that down B movement so well. To go for the back throw, of course. Nice. Oh. Empty jump there for the forward tilt. Yeah, that forward tilt is very well spaced too. Okay. It's going to play around the grenade. Get some time to charge, but Apollo Kage is Putting the minefield out on the stage. A lot of explosives. A lot of explosives indeed here. Sharp looking to get oh. in with dash attack. He's got to be careful, man. I won't put another Apollo Cricket. We'll catch on to that. We'll probably find a punish instead. Tries for oh, the man. second time for four till nothing to be found. Yeah, he tried to go for the Epsil mix up on shield, but Sharp is not falling for it. Oh, oh no, oh, yeah. See, that was. That, see, he did it the first time. Now he goes there for the second time, knowing that Sharp will try to panic out of that. Because usually you are able to connect that forward tilt all the way through. Wow, 0 to 47 from Apollo Kage. Yeah, Sharp looking to sneak in that back at the last second. No shield drop there from Apollo Kage, 144. He's going up high. I wonder, I wonder if he could have killed him with up throw if he had the grenade in his hand instead of the back throw he went for. Yeah, but it was good. look at the way that Sharp chased down Apollo Kage knowing he didn't hit him, but it's still good enough to, for him to force Apollo Kage to consider that, like, if I do get hit out of Cypher this high up, at this percent, I will lose a stock, and unfortunately, that, uh, that led him all across the stage to lose a stock either way. So it's good that we do see Sharp be that aggressive, even when a snake is high up in the air. We saw oh. him do that with Lucina, we see him do it with Wolf. He's definitely not giving up with that on Samus. Oh, man. Apollo Kage... Kind of a lead here, but man, Sharp is not giving up at all. A little bit of pressure on the platform, catches the landing with the up air. Oh no. Oh, okay, not enough, but very close. Okay. Sharp gonna get some time to charge on the platform a little bit. Oh man, the landing with the down B is so tricky to catch. And the sweet spot back there, weaving around all those landing traps of Snake so, so elegantly. Sneaking in that back here. And uh, yeah, Sharp, man gonna take that 3-1 with the clutch Samus counter pick again first time you've been seeing him pull out this character